Hi there. There's quite some interest in Oracle's free and open source enterprise JavaScript toolkit. It is composed of a set of very popular free and open source JavaScript libraries and is ready to use for front-end enterprise applications. What we're going to do in this quick overview is instead of starting from scratch with Oracle Jet, we're going to take an existing application and move it to Jet. That is what a lot of people would like to do. Not everyone wants to start from scratch creating a Oracle Jet application. A lot of people out there have existing applications and would like some guidelines for moving their existing JavaScript front-end applications to Oracle Jet. That is the focus of this quick YouTube screencast. For purposes of this first scenario, we're going to take the todomvc.com website and you will see there a lot of different to-do applications, all created in a variety of different frameworks and libraries. We're going to take this as a starting point and move an application created in this manner to Oracle Jet. If you click on view on GitHub here, you will find yourself on the examples page eventually and along towards the end here, you will see that there is a knockout require sample that provides to do functionality. When you get hold of that and you run it in the browser, you will see that we have an application that looks like this and we can provide to do items, do something else work on a screencast and the application provides quite some interesting functionality for example you can double click which lets you edit the item and you can click on this little circle you see here on the left which marks it as being completed you can click here on clear completed you can also click on this little cross here and which will delete it so quite some functionality built in here and what you're going to do is move this application to Oracle Jet. The first question to ask is why would you want to take our application and move it to Oracle Jet? Well, Oracle Jet provides a range of handy features when you're creating larger JavaScript frontends. For example, you get from the starter template a range of tabs along the top here, a drop down with some functionality. When you change the resolution of the browser and you make it smaller, you will see that responsive design is built in. So you have this hamburger icon. So a range of facilities for setting up your application. The single page application architecture is supported, which you can see as we move to a different item, we remain in the index page. So SPA is supported, um, responsive design is supported, a range of components are available. How do we get our existing application into the Oracle Jet structure? I would suggest quite strongly that you start with the Oracle Jet Quick Start template. So go to NetBeans, go to the samples category, go to HTML5 JavaScript, and in here you will find Oracle Jet Quick Start Basic. Alternatively, use Yeoman. The instructions are on the Oracle Jet website to set up the template. And then the question is one of moving your existing application into the structure of an Oracle Jet application. Now you can see here that we have this view models folder with content, our JavaScript files in the template and we have the views folder with the HTML views. Now let's look at our original application that we'd like to move. We can see that we have a config folder and here with some key bindings, we have an extends folder with some various um, tweaks and binding handlers and typical knockout constructs. We have a models folder and here is our model and we have a view models folder with a to do JS and we have, as we would expect in a require knockout application, a require block and require config. We also have some libraries. Knockout and require are already part of an Oracle Jet application, so we just need to take these two, which provide a CSS style sheet and another CSS style sheet and a base JavaScript file. So some infrastructure. We'll just copy these from here and we're going to move them into the libs folder. So that's what we do. So let's see, what shall we do next? Um, first of all, these generic utility files and so on, we're just going to copy and paste them into our JS folder here. And we've done that. 
So we have config, extends, and we have uh, models. Okay. Next thing, let's take this to do JS. And here is quite some logic, some typical um, knockout constructs here that you would expect within a define block. Just going to copy this from here and we're going to go into a view models folder and we're going to paste it in there and we're going to go into our index file from the original application and we're going to copy that and we're going to paste it into our views folder and we're going to call that index file we're going to rename that to to do okay so we have in fact a new arcojet module now let's hook up this module and let's see how far we are so we go into the app controller this is where the routing and navigation is defined. So in here we have incidents. So this is the name of the module, which is to do. And we say here to do. And that's the router. And then we're going to go into the nav data in here. I'm going to copy this down here and put to do there and to do here. Let's see what the result of this is back in the browser. So we have here our to-do. Um, okay, let's take a look. Does it actually work? Okay, the style sheet isn't there yet. Okay, it doesn't work yet. Let's press F12, come to developer tools. Do we get some error messages? Nothing really useful yet. Okay, let's go back and work a bit further. So you can see we have our basic UI already in there, hooked up and yeah, it's all working. But we need to get a bit further here now. Let's start by looking in our bootstrap file, main.js. We take this and we take the main.js from the original application. And let's go in there. If there is such a file, there must be. There is main.js. Now we can see that here our config global is loaded. So I'm going to take this. And it's also referenced there as G and it's used a bit later on. And also this extends handler is loaded. So we go in here. And here we had a G. So this is the fourth item. Here it is. And we go back in there and we see extends handlers. We load this as well. Okay. So in here we have this enter key definition and so let's see if this works back in the browser so i want to type something press enter yes okay it looks a bit horrible so that must be something to do with the style sheets be back in here now and let's find the index file this is the original index file and there's a reference here to some style sheets so we're going to copy those and we're going to move into the index file in here. Find the index file. And right at the end, we're going to just stick those two CSS files in and then reference them correctly. So they're now not in node modules, they're in JS libs. And this is also JS libs. And now let's go back to the browser and see the result. Okay, looks a lot better. However, this is all messed up. There must be some overrides in the CSS style sheets that we can work on. Let's go into base CSS. Okay, it looks okay. Nothing too surprising here. Let's go back again and look at index CSS. Ah, okay. So anything with HTML body is going to have a big impact on the whole application and body as well. So let's just comment this out for the moment and see how it looks in the browser. Okay, much better, much better. Now let's um, click on here. Okay, delete doesn't work. So let's look back in our application for what the reason for that might be. Okay, so we must be looking inside of the to do HTML file. Now what's going on here? Let's find the remove root remove possibly this is wrong i'm just going to replace root which might be going too far up the application from root to parent so you can see here i've got parent and replace all there we are now let's go back to the browser
Okay, here we are. So do some shopping and press enter. And now let's click on this. Okay, that's working. Hello world. Bye bye everyone. And let's see, can we double click on this? Yes, that works. Can we click on this here? Yes, that works. Can we clear? That works. So very quickly, we've moved this application into an Oracle Jet template. And this is um, the basic idea. Take your existing application and move the pieces that are relevant into your Oracle Jet application. It's a bit of figuring out and tweaking. And you may argue that I've cheated a little bit by starting out with a knockout require application. But the point is that ultimately your application does need to support a knockout and require. Um, oh, definitely a require, not necessarily knockout. However, the key idea behind this quick migration was to take the existing to do JavaScript file and treat that as a define block, which it is in this case and put it into your application on the view model side. Take the index HTML um, that the more than likely is and make that the view of the to do JS. And then you've made a really good start. From that point onwards, you may have to do a little bit of tweaking and reconfiguring, but um, the basics are done. Moving an application to Oracle Jet, no matter how large the original application is, is a variation on this process. Start with the Oracle Jet Quick Start template move the bits and pieces of your own application into that structure. And before you know it, you will actually have an Oracle Jet application and be able to benefit from all the enterprise features such as internationalization, accessibility, the modular architecture, um, and the growing community around it. Thanks, and hope this helps you to get started moving your application to Oracle Jet.